Okay, in this video we'll talk about a very important technique called analysis of variance, or ANOVA. So, ANOVA. And ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. And ANOVA is used if you want to compare more than just two means. And remember from one of the first videos how we actually compare just two means. So, what is the basic idea behind ANOVA? Well, let's take a simple example. You have a sample consisting of several trading companies, and you would like to know what determines their income. However, the only additional information you have is their nationality. Um, so they are either from uh, the, the, the Netherlands, so they're Dutch, from Prussia, or from Sweden. And how could you plot your data? Well, since we don't have a numerical explanatory variable, but a categorical one, it would look like that. So let me draw a quick plot over here. So we have our x and y axis, of course, but on our x axis, we would have the number of the observation. So we have observation number one, number two, three, four, five, let's say all the way down to observation number, I, I don't know what that is, let's say it's just 15, okay? So all the way to 15. And on my y-axis, I would have the income. So then of course I gotta label my Y axis, so let's say zero is down here, over there it's 500 monetary units, and whatever you measure it, 1000, 1500, 2000, and 2500 is over there. Okay, so this is, this is our scale. Now, how would our plot look like? Well, let's do the following. Um, since I know the nationality of my trading companies, let's write down little um, letters instead of dots. So if I would write down an S, then my observation would be from Sweden. If I write down a P, then my observation would be from Prussia. And if I write down a D, then my observation would be from the Netherlands. So it's Dutch. So observation number one, let's say, is from Sweden, and the value is right over there. Number two is also from Sweden, it's over there. This is over here. So these are my, oops, these are my Swedish observations. And let's do the same thing for our Prussian observations. So the Prussians would be right around here. Prussian, 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 Prussian. Let's one more. Let's do it one more time for the Dutch trading companies. So Dutch, 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 Dutch. Now let's let's do one more. Okay, so that now it looks pretty nice. Okay, so this is how I would plot my data. So every single letter is a trading company and the letter or the color tells you what's the nationality of this trading company. Okay, and then you can just look up the income of the single trading company. Okay, so this is how my data looks like. So what, or what could, or how could we make sense of the data if we would have no additional information? So if we would only have the trading companies and we would and know the income of the single trading companies. How could we make sense of the data? Well, then the only thing we could do really is to draw the overall mean and that would be, well, right around here. Let's call that M1, okay? So this is the overall mean of all of our observations. However, since we know that our observations are of different groups, why not use group-specific means? So. We use a group specific mean by, well, just calculating the mean for all the Swedish observations. And that mean would be right around here. And let's call that MS. Now, let's do the same thing for the Prussian trading companies. And that mean would be right around here. So it's MP. And of course, we do the same thing for the Dutch, oh no, the mean is not over there. And let's do the same thing for the Dutch trading companies, okay? 
Now, keep in mind that we also have residuals, right? And well, you can think of the residuals like this. So first there is the residual um, or there are the residuals concerning the overall mean. So this would be a residual to the overall mean. This would be a residual to, to the overall mean. Just the distance to the mean line. It's like exactly like the distance to the least squares line, right? You remember from regression analysis how that works. Okay, so we have a lot of residuals and I won't draw all of them. However, there are also residuals to the group specific mean line and take a look at the distance. So can't even draw them, right? So here, these are the residuals to the group specific mean line. Let's do the same thing for our Prussian example. It's pretty hard to draw actually. And let's do the same thing for the Swedish observations. Okay, so there are residuals as well. Okay, now, um, so we can conclude actually that the means are in fact different because, well, what's the mean of our Swedish observations? Well, that's right over there. It's like what? It's like 600. What is the mean of our um, Prussian observations? Well, it's like 1,100. And what's the mean of our Dutch observation? Well, it's like 2,000 something. Okay, so we can conclude by visual inspection that the means are in fact different. But things are not always that simple. So we need to decide when this um, uh, increase in explanatory power because remember the residuals to the uh, mean uh, to the group specific mean lines are much smaller than the residuals to the uh, overall mean lines so we can increase our knowledge by including these group specific mean lines and we need to have some sort of measure where we can decide whether this increase in explanatory power is um, actually significant or uh, if it's just due to yeah, pure chance. And for this purpose, we'll use the so-called F ratio. So we use the F ratio. So the F ratio. And the F ratio checks how much variation is explained by our model. So how much variation is explained by our group specific mean lines and how much variation is still left unexplained. So there's a critical value for this, uh, for this, and if the actual value is above the critical value, so the value of the F ratio, um, then we'll say that the difference are in fact significant. So in other words, it's kind of like the T value when we compared just two means. Okay, um, now maybe this is a bit complicated, but uh, next I'm gonna blow your mind because um, there's also another way to think about ANOVA and you can think of ANOVA as some sort of dummy regression. Now getting back to our previous example, how could we rephrase our problem as a regression example? Well, that's actually pretty easy. Um, just use two v dummy variables for nationality. So how would we do that? Well, we would say, okay, income is equal to alpha 1 plus beta 1 times uh, Prussian plus beta 2 times Swedish and some error term. Okay, so this is our regression. Uh, this is our regression equation. So what I did was I included two dummy variables for uh, the trading companies, one whether um, the trading company is Prussian or not, and one for whether the trading company is Swedish or not. Now, notice that there's no um, dummy variable for being Dutch because this is our reference category. So we estimate our parameters and what we get are the following estimates. So, well, I just, yeah, just randomly assign the following estimates to it. So income is equal to, yeah, let's say, 2000 minus 900 times Prussian minus, let's say, 1400 times Swedish and some error term. 
Okay, so this is our regression equation. Now, how can we interpret uh, these results? How can we do that? Well, alpha one over here, that is equal to 2000. Well, this is just simply uh, equal to the mean value for the income of Dutch trading companies, like 2000, right? So 2000 is the mean value for the Dutch trading companies. And this is alpha, alpha one over there. Now, what is beta one? So what is this value over here, beta one? Well, beta one is equal to minus 900. So what does that tell us? Well, beta one that, that is equal to minus 900 is the effect of being from Prussia. So that on average, Prussian trading companies make 900 monetary units less than Dutch trading companies. So this is very important, right? We have the our reference category are Dutch trading companies. So um, Prussian trading companies make on average 900 monetary units less than Dutch trading companies. And we know that, well, I don't know whether it's exactly minus 900 or not, but you can see that the, the mean value for the Dutch trading companies is smaller than the mean value for, uh, sorry, the, the mean value for the Prussian trading companies is smaller than the mean value for the Dutch trading companies. And the same applies for the Swedish trade companies, because have a look over there, this value is even smaller. So beta two is equal to minus 1,400. And this means that Swedish trade companies make on average 1,400 monetary units less than Dutch trading companies. So in this case, the, and let's say the, by the way, let's say these um, estimates are actually statistically significant. So um, in this case, the difference are pretty clear. But it could happen that you get non-significant results for these estimates over there. But the means are still different from each other. So always use your F ratio if you want to check the following hypothesis. So if you say, okay, I want to check whether the mean value for the Dutch trading companies is equal to the mean value for the Prussian trade companies that is equal for the Swedish trade companies. So if you want to check that, always make sure that you use your F ratio and don't just look at the single um, estimates. Always use your F ratio if you want to check that hy well null hypothesis of equal means. And of course it could happen that you can reject this null hypothesis and conclude okay the means are in fact not the same they are different so being from a def from from well some some country has an effect on your income right so this is what you would conclude. So as you can see ANOVA is well a pretty great tool but in fact it's well, just some sort of regression. Um, that, that's, I think, is a very good way to think of it.